Hi everybody. In this lecture or in this video, we'll be learning about improper integrals and we will be exploring type 1 improper integrals. In order to understand improper integrals, first let's remember what was a definite integral. So a definite integral is an integral from a to b f of x dx where the domain of integration a b is finite and the range of the integrand, the range of the integrand is also finite on this domain. Like if we have an integral from 1 to 2, 1 over x dx, this is a definite integral, the domain is from 1 to 2 which is finite and the range on this domain is from 1 to 1 over 2 which is also finite. So this is a definite integral. But in practice we have integrals that fail one or both of these conditions which means they are not definite integral, we call them improper integrals. Of course there are many different combinations of failing these two conditions, but we will just be exploring one class uh, uh, which is going to be called type 1 improper integrals. Improper integrals of type 1 are integrals with infinite limits of integration which means, okay, you can have the upper limit to be infinite, you can have the lower limit to be infinite or you can have both of the limits of integration to be infinite. If you have this type, that means if your function is continuous on this interval, then this improper integral is defined with a limit from b going to infinity from a to b f of x dx. That means in order to calculate this improper integral, first you have to calculate this definite integral and then you have to calculate a limit. If your infinite limit is in the lower limit, that means if the function is continuous on this interval, then you have the limit as a goes to minus infinity this time, then you have a limit from a to b f of x dx. Likewise, we are also going to define this with limits, but whenever you have this kind of condition where you have the lower and upper limit infinite, first you have to split it to two. Okay, this number uh, C is any real number. So that means you have this defined with this limit from A to C f of x dx. And you have this one B going to infinity from C to B f of x dx. In each case, if the limit on the right hand side Okay, here you have one, here you have one, here you have two. It is finite. We say that the improper integral converges and that this limit value is the value of this improper integral. If this limit fails to exist, then we say the improper integral diverges. Let me just give you quickly examples, okay, so you have something like this, this is an improper integral which means we are going to define this as b goes to infinity from a to b 1 over x dx. This is a type 1 improper integral where the problem, uh, where the infinite limit is in the upper one, okay, and if you want to give an example to this one, I have the limit as a goes to minus infinity from a to minus 2 dx 
over x square. Okay, if I were to give an example for this one, okay, so I'm just going to pick a real number between minus infinity and infinity. I'm just choosing zero. You can choose any other real number. It's also going to be correct from zero to infinity. This is minus infinity. So now you have two limits. The first one, the limit as a goes to minus infinity from a to zero, dx one plus x square. And the other one is b goes to infinity from zero to b, dx one plus x square. Now let's consider and let's solve these examples that I have written down. Okay, so I have the first one from 1 to infinity, 1 over x dx. Let's see what it means geometrically. Geometrically, from 1 to infinity, I'm trying to see what is the area of this region which is not a closed region. I'm trying to understand what kind of an area will I have a finite or infinite area when this graph is approaching its horizontal asymptote. Now the answer will tell us. So I have the limit as b tends to infinity ln x from 1 to b. So I have the limit as b tends to infinity ln b minus ln 1. This is clearly 0. The answer is going to be infinity, which means this limit doesn't exist, which means this improper integral diverges geometrically, which means this area under this curve is not finite. Now, let's move to the second example. It's almost the same. We are still looking for what is going to happen to the area under this curve where the graph is approaching its horizontal asymptote. The only difference between 1 over x and 1 over x squared is that this is approaching its horizontal asymptote quicker compared to 1 over x. Let's see if the pace is going to make a difference. So I have the limit as a tends to minus infinity. I have minus 1 over x. So I have the limit of 1 over 2 plus 1 over a. Okay, 1 over a will be 0 as a tends to minus infinity. So the answer to this limit is going to be 1 over 2. That means the value of this improper integral is 1 over 2. That means the area is finite and it's equal to 1 over 2. Although it's not closed, but the, the pace that the graph is approaching to its asymptote is... It, will, it, it seems like this is a closed region, so the improper integral converges. So this area where the graph is approaching its horizontal asymptote is calculable, which is 1 over 2. Now let's go to this example. We have almost exactly the same problem here. It's uh, y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. I have an improper integral and I'm trying to find out if the area under this curve is finite or not. So I have the limit as a approaches minus infinity. The answer to this integral is inverse tangent x plus the limit as b approaches to infinity. This integral is inverse tangent x, so I have the limit of inverse tangent 0 minus inverse tangent a plus inverse tangent b minus inverse tangent 0. Okay, I know that this is 0. I know that this is 0. Okay, I know that Okay, inverse tangent a, where a tends to minus infinity is minus 1 over 2. So I have a plus 
pi over 2. Uh, here I have b tends to infinity inverse tangent b is pi over 2. So the answer is pi, which means the answer to this improper integral is pi. The answer to the area of this uh, curve, under this curve, is pi, which means this improper integral is a convergent in proper integral. In the previous examples, we have seen that the pace the graph is approaching its horizontal asymptote makes a difference. Okay, so now we're going to cover them all together. We're going to take this, okay, where in each case, whatever p is between zero, I'm, I'm greater than zero, y equals zero is always horizontal asymptote. So we're going to try to understand what happens if p is greater than one. We're going to show that it converges. That means approaching is quicker, so it converges. But if p is between zero and one, the approach is not so quick, so it's going to diverge, okay? We call this p integral. Okay, now, I have divided into two, the case where p is not equal to 1 and the case where p is equal to 1. Let's start with this one, okay, if p is not equal to 1, then x to the power minus p, the integral is minus p plus 1 over minus p plus 1. This is the reason we have excluded the case p is equal to 1, because if p is 1, then this denominator becomes 0, which becomes undefined, so that's why I have excluded. Okay, so I have the limit of this expression, which I'm going to rewrite as, I'm going to take the common factor 1 over 1 minus p out, 1 over b to the power p minus 1 minus 1. We're going to explore the limit of this expression. The limit of the expression 1 over b to the power p minus 1, if p is greater than 1, is 0. If p is between 0 and 1, is infinity, which means, okay, if p is greater than 1, this is 0, 0 minus 1, so the limit is going to be 1 over p minus 1. If p is greater than 0, if p is between 0 and 1, this limit is going to be infinity, which means in this case the improper integral will have a finite answer, which means it's going to converge. Okay, this, the improper integral, the limit will have an infinite, won't exist, so this improper integral will diverge. In the case where p is equal to 1, we already have seen these examples in the previous example, so I'm just going to repeat. This is ln x from 1 to b, limit b tends to infinity, ln b minus ln 1, ln 1 is clearly 0, so this limit is infinity, so the case where p is equal to 1, the improper integral diverges. So I have finished to show that it converges if p is greater than 1, it diverges if p is between 0 and 1. To write in a general manner, okay, I can say, okay, so there's lower limit doesn't have to be 1. It can be any real number, but that real number should be always positive, okay? Because if this real number is 0 or a negative number, then the classification of type 1 improper integral is no longer correct. So, if p is greater than 1, converges if p is between 1 and 0, it diverges. So I don't need to do any calculation. So if I have from 1 over 2 to infinity, 1 over cube root of x, 
P is 1 over 3 between 0 and 1. So it diverges. No calculation needed. I already have uh, proved it. So if I have from 5 to infinity dx, x to the power 5, P is 5 greater than 1, converges. To sum it up, let's go over the bullet points of this video. In this video, we have learned about improper integral, what is an improper integral, and we have learned about, talked about the difference between uh, definite and uh, improper integrals. Okay, then we have talked about the classification of improper integrals of type 1 and we have learned how to define them with limits. Then we have also learned about the convergence and divergence of improper integrals. This, I hope you find this video helpful. This was just an overview of improper integrals of type 1. If you want to learn the subject in depth, you have to do some more reading. Goodbye to you all.